Why are all these Gen Z Asian podcasts all uncensored, unhinged, but kind of entertaining? Oh, we got to talk about it, Andrew, because these Gen Z Asian podcasters have been popping up on my feed. We've got three major takeaways, but we got to run the clips first. Let us know what you guys think. What can you guys buy with your body count? <laughs> yeah. oh but like vague, right? Yeah, vague, vague, like vague. Don't, don't say like a $5 foot long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying, yeah. I could buy a nice sushi. Sushi? Yeah, <laughs> a nice sushi. Omakase? No, no, no. Tell them. I think I have the most experience on dating skinny quiet guys. And? And I would say I agree. They're that, fucking weird. Wait. Was that the question okay. though? Yeah, wait, I'm confused now. Why weird? Like they're freaky and bad. Oh. Like, they're also weird. I know you've gotten with someone that's not <laughs> size and you don't know. What? Yeah. Hey, you wanna see my dick, bro? <laughs> I will slow that video down for you too. <laughs> Especially that nutting shot. Don't date a girl unless she's had a <laughs> face. My <laughs> face never ends, bro. I will say. <laughs> I'm not saying one guy for an hour i am just as ran through as a girl 17 guys in one so hour all right man my first takeaway and by the way i gotta give a shout out to any asian that is making content on the internet we just gotta get out there and break through that box i would say this andrew they are way less taboo uh or or, or following i guess like confucian rules about not discussing sex drugs interviewing porn stars because you know that's interfacing with like a bad world or at least what confucian Model minority Asian parents would say, that's bad. Why you talk to that girl? Yeah, I mean, basically, they're letting loose. And they're pretty much operating under the fact that anything they put on the internet now is not going to compromise their image down the road. You know, I think growing up, the way we did YouTube, and I'll just use us as an example, or Wong Fu and that whole kind of scene, of whatever we put out on the internet, we felt like we knew it was staying on the internet, so therefore, don't put anything raunchy or personal out, or else it could be held against you later and brought up. And that's still kind of that thinking that we're brought up with, but I feel like this generation of Asians, they're not thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, and they there was people in our generation, for example, like Tim and JK, that was kind of going against that, yeah, a but bit. it was still going against that while acknowledging that that was the major like downstream right. movement. It just feels natural for these kids. It's almost like the internet is not a platform it's just their life. Yeah, yeah, the internet's not an auxiliary world that could impact the IRL world. It's just the world. It's all been like melted together into I, a fondue. I would say I don't think anybody doing these types of podcasts are going to go apply for medical school, for example, or law school in the future. Right, right. I'm not saying they didn't go to college and they're not educated in their own way, but I highly doubt that they are going to be seeking a professional career after this because- them just putting everything out there like that, it's it's probably not like a smart move if you had yeah. like another career. But it also do. actually has to play in with um, the diversity in industries nowadays. You can make like a lot of money doing a lot of things now. Obviously, everybody's doing like Amazon drop shipping or F, you know, direct yeah. fulfillment. And there's just yeah, like yeah. stock trading, shorting the market, buying calls, puts. I, the and one last thing is like, you know, I felt like, a lot of our parents were always looking over our content or keeping up with what we we're doing and you didn't want to let them down. You didn't want to embarrass them and shame them where it's like, if you put something out, like back in the day, mom and dad would like text them. Oh, Hey, I saw that video. Why you put the girl's boobies in the thumbnail? Yeah. Like that's not good, you know? And then, so that was, that shame was always on us, that cloud of our parents, but these kids, it doesn't look like they have that. Maybe their parents don't care and, as and much. And by the way, I still think those heart seller act type parents that are hyper, hyper, like, I guess, fitting into the model minority vibe, they still exist, but there's just more diversity now. You have parents that are merchant parents. They've been divorced. Maybe, you know, people are just like not having as much uh, of that pressure coming down yeah. on them from up I top. I mean, listen, maybe there's Asian parents out there that are just like, oh, like my son and daughter, like they just want to be on the internet and like talk with their friends. That's okay. As long as they're safe, you know, like I don't care. Yeah. It, you know what it reminds me of? The closest thing I can see is like international school kids in Asia. I met them like 10, 20 years ago, traveling back to Asia, mm -hmm. Andrew. And those kids always had a level of freeness. I remember amongst like you know, Taipei American school yeah. or like Singapore American school or Beijing American school. Yeah. Those kids, the way they would act, I was always like, yo, I've never seen Asian Americans be like this because they would talk about this and that. But that's what I've started to see from the Gen Z Asian Americans without having to be this like weird elite aristocratic like third culture kid. Moving on to point number two, Andrew. People want to see Asians break outside of the confines of being model minorities. Like we were saying, juxtaposed with, I guess, subtle Asian traits, which I would say that that's more Asians, almost more still fitting in with the Wong Fu vibe. You know, they're still drinking boba. They're still going to K-pop concerts. 
maybe EDM, but EDM, I don't even see the EDM memes really get posted on subtle Asian traits like that. Basically, it seems like that subtle Asian traits, well, obviously it's subtle Asian traits. So there's that Asian culture that still kind of confines everybody. Ooh, not, and all that, Yeah, right? not in a bad way, but the conversation doesn't get too raunchy. It doesn't get R-rated. I'm not saying people on subtle Asian traits aren't doing R-rated things some, in Some their level life. of it. I don't think as much as these, like, podcasters yes, are. But. but I'm just saying that what you're talking about and what you're putting forth is, like, very PG, PG-13. Right, they're MO. still showing means. They still have face of, like, being like, yeah. oh, yeah, these are the things I want to put out into the world. Yes. Like, I would not like to put a Droog meme. Yes. Like, I may be having sex and doing these things, but I won't talk about them. Yeah, well, when you compare that to, like, Asian pop stars in Asia, they yeah. might be doing all types of stuff low key but obviously to the face they're just like picking up babies and just being you know the most confucian good boys i will say this definitely some of these podcasters have talent but i think you know some more than others but i think that some of it right now it's just i get to see a good looking asian talking about something that's like taboo they may, might be okay for like a white, black, or a Latino, but not for an Asian. And yeah. that's part of the appeal, whether these people are doing, talking about, you know, sex and drugs on TikTok or, for example, in a YouTube podcast. Yeah. And to be honest, uh, they're not really talking about anything super important, but I have to say it's entertaining. Like these short clips that we see that even our friends are showing us and, and we're all talking about, it's like, man, these are just kids who feel free they just right. feel free and it's kind of refreshing to see asians do that that they don't care about their careers and i and think they that, don't care and about I think that that's why a lot of these kids actually come from california yeah. where they come from the oc or they come from the bay area because california is the only place that almost has that like hawaii type vibe mm -hmm. to it depending on which neighborhood you grow up in yeah. where you feel so free you don't even need to whether you're rebelling or leaning into it you're not even reacting to almost that like hyper nerdy stimulus uh, archetype being placed on Yeah, you. I mean, I think that the, for example, a lot of these podcasts are not coming out of New York City, right? New York City, first of all, to live here, it is already expensive if you moved here. More, and then, more people have conventional careers. Yeah, right? and there's just like this kind of air of like, be chill, be yourself, be open over on the West Coast, dude. Like, that's LA, that's the Bay Area. Well, specifically OC. OC yeah. is like the king. Yeah, I mean, not the 949 podcast is, I think it's ran out of the OC. Makes sense. Yeah. Point number three, Andrew, where does this actually go? Like, I think that, you know, most of these podcasts are, I want to say are like a year old. Mm. You know, I'd like to see another year to see where they develop. But I guess where do podcasts where there's Asians uh, that clearly don't look like they're trying to become like their cousin who's like going to Harvard Medical School or whatever. Right. Uh, where, where does this go? Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. You know, like I think right now there's so much content on the internet, as you guys know, uh, through TikTok. And I mean, I think a lot of people are watching the clips. I don't think as many people are tuning into the entire podcast because sometimes the highlights, obviously, as we know, make the podcast better than the actual full length one. Right. Because it's like watching was, uh, NBA highlights yeah. on Instagram versus watching the games. For example, I was listening to some of the full length podcasts of some of these podcasts and it was like kind of messy and a little disjointed, but the clips were great. Right. There's no show runner, but they, there's still some glimpses. So I don't know where it goes, especially if it's this, this group of friends, unless they can expand out and become like a talk show where they interview people. So I guess something like Jimmy Zhang's like down bad show, you know how he brings in different people. It's not just about him and his friends talking about stuff. So I guess that, might have more legs, but I'm not really sure, man. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, a lot of these things, they can stay in a niche, right, and be monetized that way. But for them to reach the levels of, like, for example, hip-hop, what hip-hop grew, like, 1,000x, 10,000x, that really needs, like, outside people to come in and, like, structure an industry around it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it is more like single solo operations, much like you can have a profitable mom-and-pop restaurant right mm -hmm. that operates in a city and even the, the 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 family can do quite well for themselves depending on how they manage their costs but it's not the same as like owning a, a thousand panda expresses across america exactly all right everybody uh let us know what you guys think about these podcasts if you have or have not heard of them uh you know what we'll shout them out we'll leave links down below to them if you want to check them out um but yeah just let us know because these are trending clips and it seems like a lot of people want to tune into this. And I'm not saying all their fans are Asian, by what, the way. Andrew, what would a millennial version look like? Because I would say most of these podcast hosts are closer to 20 than 30. That would be interesting. I don't know. Because, you know, there's a lot of people, I will say this, and I'm not like defending millennials, right, or 30 plus people, but it's like people still did some of these things, but I just don't think they would ever feel comfortable 
putting them out on the internet. No, we don't want to put our parents to shame, but uh, I don't know. Maybe these kids are not putting their parents to shame or maybe they don't care. So I don't know. You guys let us know in the comments down below what you guys think. Is uh, it good? Is it bad? Are people feeling 50-50 about it? Because Andrew, I could see a lot of Asian Americans from the older generation. They have like that Confucian side that is more similar to their parents. We're like, hey, this hey, is uh, hey. not how we should represent ourselves in this country. And other people are like, this is lit. We're, we're finally being a part of everything. Maybe that's true. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Leave a comment down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.